Informal fallacies of reasoning. Okay, this is going to be fun, actually. Hmm. Suppose this pencil were a line of reasoning, and it proceeded from premises all the way to a conclusion. Now, suppose that happened. The pencil breaks. That's what a fallacy is. A fallacy is a break in the process of reasoning. A fallacy is not a myth. It's a mistake, a break in the process of reasoning. Now, the reason why we're going to study informal fallacies of reasoning now is because you're about to write your first essay in this class. And in order for you to write a successful essay in critical thinking, you're going to have to identify and hopefully avoid all of the informal fallacies, mistakes, breaks in the process of reasoning that we all carry around with us every single day. No one is immune to making these mistakes. And even veteran critical thinkers and even professors of critical thinking are known on occasion to commit informal fallacies of reasoning or mistakes in the process of reasoning. Most textbooks, mine included, divide the informal fallacies of reasoning that are most common in everyday life into three categories. And there's a reason for this. First of all, the categories represent the basic necessary and sufficient conditions. You remember that distinction, don't you? As to why a given fallacy belongs in that category or family. The three categories are fallacies of relevance. These are fallacies where the premises are not relevant to the conclusion and so therefore cannot possibly entail the conclusion by logical necessity. Next are fallacies of presumption. In these fallacies, there is some blatant, obvious, troubling, suspicious assumption buried in the very statement of the premises, which makes it impossible for us to draw a necessary inference from those premises to a conclusion. And the last category, which is really the most fun, the last category of informal fallacies actually is studied by comedians, stand-up comics, anybody who has a sense of humor. These are the fallacies of ambiguity. These fallacies are committed because there is something double meaning or even triple meaning, contained in the premises that makes it very difficult to see how we can draw a necessary inference from the premises to the conclusion. So over the next few weeks, we will take each of these categories one by one. We will identify the most common fallacies in each category. And in this way, we are also preparing ourselves for the third learning objective in this class, categorical logic.